Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome to another session of the Spatial Statistics and Spatial Econometrics course that's being taught by Dr. Gaurav Aroda. My name is Saif and uh, what I will work with you today is on some practical aspects of this course. Uh, specifically, uh, I will start introducing you to the programming language and the programming environment that we're going to be using using in this course uh, to do our practical work with data. Basically, if we want to excel at spatial statistics, or if we want to excel at really any, any subject, um, we need two things. Uh, first, we need a firm and clear and precise understanding of concepts, principles, and theory. Um, and this is obtained uh, by listening carefully to lectures uh, and questioning the material that you, that, you, that you receive and then reflecting on your own. And another really important thing for understanding is to uh, what, what my teachers call putting pen to paper. So actually doing written work on your own, solving the proofs, the exercises and doing different versions of them. This is what refines your understanding uh, of the material, of the theoretical material, which you've been exploring with Dr. Gaurav. But there is a second aspect to excellence, uh, which is skill-based. Uh, and this is specifically true in courses like this, where there is a computational element. Um, and by skills, what I mean is that you are able to apply your understanding to a variety of real world problems and real world data. The amount of data that's available in, out there today in public, in the public domain uh, uh, regarding all kinds of uh, phenomena and processes is increasing day by day. And this is a great opportunity to develop the right skills. And specifically for spatial statistics, the way to develop the skill is by working with this data and actually doing something, uh, trying to solve some real problem or answer some specific question using code and software and trying and failing. So skill-based uh, development is a little different from developing understanding in the sense that you actually have to do stuff, try and fail, and fail as early as possible. Because any time you do anything new, uh, you're going to have failure. And in coding and programming, it's better to just get the failure out of the way right away. And it's okay to fail, it's encouraged to fail. Um, and while working things out on paper is important for skills as well, uh, what's really important that you actually put your fingers to the keyboard and, uh, and try stuff out. The best way is to try stuff out. Uh, it, it, skill, uh, skill development is not so much, uh, of course it is about thinking, uh, but the emphasis is on trying and doing. And, 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 and we, will, we will work with, uh, you know, if you, if you can achieve excellence in both of these things, um, then it, 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 um, it, it, it aids you in two ways. Uh, a, it helps with growth. Uh, it opens up new career opportunities for uh, jobs, employment, and new opportunities for higher studies and research. Um, and specifically for this course, uh, where we are exploring spatial statistics and econometrics, it can also help with personal fulfillment and understanding of the world. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are interested in socioeconomic problems of wealth inequality, um, environmental problems. Uh, for example, we'll be looking at groundwater depletion in this course. Uh, there's air pollution, whole host of environmental problems. There are financial problems with depressions, recessions uh, that affect real people and real lives every single day. Uh, and of course, all of you are familiar with the problems that we have with the pandemic. And what underlies all of these problems is spatial relationships and spatial patterns. 
And if you can develop the understanding and the skill uh, needed to address these problems, you have the opportunity to make real good social impact. Um, and uh, that's personally very fulfilling. And we hope that we can uh, help you and explore with you the kind of things you need to do in order to develop these skills. So I will be working with you on practical sessions, on tutorials where we'll actually be doing stuff, trying, failing, and trying again. So concretely, what will we actually learn in these sessions? Uh, what, what are you going to learn? Uh, broadly, you'll learn two things. Uh, well, you will learn how to program uh, using a programming language that is called R. Uh, it's just a one letter name, it's called R. It's a very popular programming language and I'll tell you about uh, why it's popular. And this programming language provides a whole host of tools for spatial statistics. Um, and related to this uh, is a software called RStudio. So we'll be using R and RStudio uh, for our programming tasks. And the second component of the practical sessions is the ability to download, uh, explore, and find data, the data that you need. So you will see some examples. I mean, this is not the emphasis of the practical sessions. The practical sessions are really aimed at helping you use R to do spatial stats. Uh, but of course, you need data to do that. So you will see examples of real world data. Um, and I'll also show you how to download this data from public uh, government portals and how to bring it into R and then work with it uh, to answer your research questions. So I just want to start with a very brief um, discussion of what R actually is. Uh, some of you may be very familiar because it's a popular programming language. But for those of you that are not, we'll start from the beginning. So what is R? R is a free software environment for statistical computing and graphics. That's sort of the official definition from, from their own web page. Um, and you'll notice that it's free, so it doesn't cost you anything to use it. Um, and it's a software environment. So it's actually a little more than just a programming language. It's a whole environment which includes a programming language, but it also includes other tools and features uh, that you can use uh, to accomplish your statistical computing um, and to uh, do visualizations and plots. Uh, R has grown actually beyond statistical computing and graphics into many, many other areas. But really, uh, those are the key, uh, the key thrusts uh, of, of R. Um, so R is available as free software and it is licensed under the GNU general public license, uh, which means that uh, it doesn't cost anything to use. Uh, and you can also download the source code uh, from the public website. So it's free and open source. Um, and, and that makes it very, very attractive because uh, if, if you have the inclination and the technical skill to do so, you can download the base source code of R and, and make changes uh, on your own. So really it affords a uh, really a large amount of transparency. And uh, it provides functionality for very easy data manipulation. So you can manipulate a variety of different kinds of data, tabular data, raster data, satellite data, um, all kinds of data. It has uh, functionality uh, for you to uh, manipulate it and do calculations and then visualize it into plots uh, and figures. Uh, but one really uh, sort of very important um, feature of R is that it's not static. It's not just something that somebody wrote and, and, and that's all it is. It can be extended. The functionality of R can be extended using something called packages. So if I care about spatial statistics uh, and spatial econometrics, the core R distribution may not have, um, you know, it may not have the functions that I need because spatial statistics is a kind of specialized field. So what I can do is I can write an extension package that people can then load into R and then use the functions uh, that I've provided in my package. And um, we will use such packages. 
so the fact that R can be extended is one of the main reasons why it's so popular mm -hmm. because over the years people have written a whole uh, range of uh, packages to extend its functionality beyond just uh, you know data science. And, and, and you know as, as is expected uh, there is heavy adoption in the industry and in academics. So I've just uh, given you a kind of uh, figure on, on the right here. Um, and this figure is showing you the uh, popular data science software. And how they're measuring the uh, popularity is that they went to the website indeed.com and uh, they looked at all of the data science jobs that were uh, posted on indeed.com uh, in June, on, on, on some day, 19th June 2017. So all of the jobs that were posted under data science on one day. Uh, and then they looked at the skill sets that people were asking for, for those in the job descriptions. And uh, in those skill sets, they found that R was number five. The, it was the, the fifth most desired skill set on indeed.com. Uh, and uh, Really, if you look at the top five, Python, SQL, Java, Amazon, ML, uh, R, and C++, etc. Uh, for statistics, uh, you really only have Amazon, ML, and R. Like th those are the two. Uh, the, the two uh, Python and Java are more general purpose. I mean, Python does statistical computing as well. Of course, it's the most popular language. Uh, so, uh, but, but you know, SQL and R are kind of different. So, you know, R is amongst the top most desired uh, skills uh, in data science. So this is just to show you that if you can develop this skill, uh, your employability uh, is, is, is expected to, uh, to rise and to increase in value. And this figure is also interesting because it, it shows you that this is the type of figure that you can make in R. You could have made this figure in R easily. Um, and uh, so, so, so you could have gotten this data from indeed.com, uh, analyzed it, done some calculations, calculated the number of uh, you know, jobs asking for a particular skill set, um, and then graphed it out. So this, uh, this figure really helps us to understand uh, the demand for skills in the data science industry. Um, and these are the kinds of uh, plots and figures that we will, uh, that we will make uh, using R, uh, of course, for our spatial statistics um, uh, tasks. Okay. So, um, you know, before we start using R, uh, we have to set up our computer to, uh, to be able to use it. And I will show you how to do that in this first session. Our goal is basically uh, to just uh, set up our computer uh, to start programming with R. Um, and for this, you need to do uh, basically three things. Uh, the, so I will show you the installation procedure for Windows. Uh, but as, as I've noted here in point number four, uh, R is also supported on uh, Unix platforms and Mac OS. So it's a cross-platform software. Uh, for practicality and constraints, I'm only showing you the installation for Windows. Uh, if you have another system, uh, if, you have a, if you run a different operating system, uh, uh, you can find the installation notes uh, on their website. And I've given the link here in point number one. So we'll go through this procedure. Um, we will uh, install the core R distribution. This is the main uh, R engine. Um, and then we will install RStudio. So RStudio is something called an integrated development environment for R. Um, and I'll tell you why it's called an integrated development environment. It, uh, the short, uh, for, for, for brevity, what I'll say right now is that we're installing this because uh, it makes your job much easier. It makes it easier to use R. Uh, you don't strictly need this, uh, but it makes your job a lot easier. And I will be using it for the rest of this course. So I do encourage you to, uh, to install this on your, on your system as well. And then once we've done that, uh, we will, today we will actually use our first R command. We will use a command called install.packages 
to install a spatial statistics package. Um, and any uh, any any R commands or keywords, anything uh, that that is uh, recognized by R uh, as a function or a keyword, I will use a different font for. So I will use this blue font. Uh, so whenever you see a slide and you see this, uh, then then you should know that that's an R specific keyword. So uh, let's uh, let's go through this procedure. So the first step is we will install the core R distribution, which is available from this this uh, page here and uh, this is the main um, uh, the, uh, the full name of R is the R project for statistical computing and the website is r-project.org and this is the main uh, the, the home page uh, feel free to explore it um, so you can download R using this link so I've already I already have it downloaded um, and then this is the uh, website for RStudio, rstudio.com. And then RStudio IDE, which is Integrated Development Environment. Uh, you can get many different versions. So there's the free version, and then there's a bunch of paid versions. You basically just need the free, free for this course, you just need the free version. So go ahead and download this, uh, this version. Um, and once you've done this, uh, you can so so you can pause right now and then go and download these two pieces of software and when you come back uh, you can continue and for now what I'll do is I'll show you how to install this so I already have it downloaded so go in this order first install R uh, so always note the version so this is R version 4.2.0 for Windows so just double click this And uh, you can select different languages here. I'm just gonna leave it at English. And then this is the GNU general public license. Uh, so you can go past that. And then it installs it in program files. I'm gonna leave it at that. If, if you prefer a different, uh, a different directory, then you can browse to that directory here. Um, I, I would I would just leave those. It takes about 166 megabytes of space, which is all right by me. Um, uh, no, I'm just going to accept default startup options. Uh, and then, yeah, I would like a start menu folder. Uh, and it's going to go ahead and complete the installation here. So if that worked out okay, uh, we can see if we got a R. Uh, so we can go ahead and install R Studio. Uh, also in program files, uh, all right, go for it. So R Studio is uh, a little bigger than R. It's uh, more than twice the size, so it takes a takes a while. Okay, so now that I've installed that, uh, we can try and start our studio. So, so once you've installed both R and R Studio, um, then uh, uh, what you want, what you will do is you will start R Studio. You're, you're never going to go and start R by itself. So if you want to use R, you will open R Studio. Uh, and this is what R Studio looks like. And now what I want to do is just briefly talk about each part of this, uh, this window. 
Um, so like I said, our studio is an integrated development environment. Uh, and what that means is that it integrates all of the components, software components that you need to do your R development. So this is the console window. So you can type an R command in, in, in here. So you can say something like, you can print something and it prints the output right away. Um, and a console window is basically, if you're familiar with MS-DOS uh, or Linux, it allows you to type commands and see the results uh, right away. Uh, so this is the console window here. And then on the right, you have something called an environment window uh, in which uh, you will see all of the data and the, the variables that you have loaded in your project. Um, on the bottom right, you have a file explorer, uh, which is like basically like Windows Explorer uh, within the R environment where you can browse through all your files and you can see the files that you want to load and open those. Um, the plots window is if you, so if you plot something, if you show, if you write some code to show a figure or, or, or some visual, uh, then R will allow you to preview that visual uh, in this window. Then um, the packages tab will tell you all of the packages uh, that you have currently installed in R. So remember that packages are pieces of software that are, that are written to extend the R functionality. Remember we spoke about this. Um, and then you can ask for help. Uh, R has a full, fully featured uh, manual and help, help window. Um, and then there are a whole host of other features. For example, you can open a new R script right here and then you can start typing your code uh, hello R uh, in here, and then you can save this as an R file. Um, so when you save an R file, always save it as .R, always use this .R extension. So you can save this and then you can source it by uh, pressing Control S. Uh, or uh, you can use this menu here, um, the code menu. Uh, uh, you can say source, right? Um, and then uh, you can see when you source it, 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 it runs this command that you have written uh, inside the file. So this allows you to write a series of commands or a function and save it as a file. And then it allows you to do that within R Studio, So this is your editor window where you can edit your R code. Um, so we will revisit all of these features again, uh, but this is just to show you that if you didn't have this, you would have to have separate software for each of these parts. So you would need a notepad editor to edit your code. Uh, you would need to run a R console to write console commands. You would need to have Windows Explorer to see your files. You would need a separate plot viewer uh, but R Studio allows you to just put everything under one window and do all your tasks together. So that's why I highly recommend uh, that you uh, uh, that, that you install this. So for the rest of this course, I'm going to assume that all of you have installed R as well as R Studio. So if we press Control L, we can clear the we can clear the console. Um, now remember. Now that we have R in R Studio, um, we want to actually uh, do spatial statistics with R. So by default, there is uh, no spatial statistics functionality that's part of R. Or if it's there, uh, it's not enough. We really need uh, something more. Um, and there's uh, a lot of packages that are available uh, for spatial statistics. Um, I'll just show you today how to install one of them. And the one that we want is called GSTAT. And so we were actually going to run an R command. So uh, at the console, we will 
um, type the command install.packages. So it gives you, you know, it prompts you. Uh, when you when you start typing, it gives you helpful prompts. So you can just select install packages. And within double quotes, you have to write the name of the package. And the name of the package that we want is uh, gstat. So once you've written out your command, you can press enter. And it will try and download the package from the internet and then install it into your R environment. So um, that happened successfully. So now we have the package gstat. We can try and look for it in the packages. Um, yeah, so now we have the package gstat. We can click on this and then uh, this is the help files specifically for the gstat package. So uh, don't worry, these are not going to mean much to you right now. Uh, but just to show you that if you click on the package name, it takes you uh, to uh, the page, the help page for that package uh, and shows you the help uh, files. And you can click on the function names and, and, and look at the help. So we are running gstat uh, package version 2.09. So it is important to be aware of versions because packages sometimes change uh, from one version to the next. So if something breaks in your code, then you know that maybe it was a version change that did that. So once you install uh, the gstat package, you have to load it and you can do that by calling the library command and then you can say library gstat. So now it's loaded into your R environment and you can start using it. So I'm gonna stop here for today um, and just go back to our summary. Um, and so just to remind you of what we've done today, we've spoken briefly about the R programming language and software environment and what it's capable of and why it's so popular. We've set it up on our computer in a Windows environment uh, by installing R, R Studio, and the GSTAT package. And we've learned very briefly about the different parts of the R Studio development environment. Um, and after this, uh, I'm assuming that you will be comfortable enough to actually start writing some code which we will do next time. So see you next time. Mm -hmm.